Okay, today we're going to do a build video on this W1K1 robot. <clears throat> Sitting here before you are all of the parts that you have to print to do it. Now basically I'm just printing in two colors, printing in white and printing in gray to minimize the amount of paint time. But also I can lay the parts out even on the small Bamboo Labs A1 Mini. One plate of parts in gray changed the filament color, one plate of parts in white made it real easy. <clears throat> so this is the end goal and uh, this is what we're starting with. Um, first thing we're going to do, because we're going to let something glue and dry, let me grab the glue. We're not quite 100% ready to do this. It's early in the morning and my brain isn't running on 100% uh, yet. So let's start with the feet and leg parts. See this part prints flat, no supports required. This part prints flat, no supports required. And the other legs exactly the same. It's not a left and right, it's the same parts. Now when you print something, when you print something, um, the first layer gets squished down. You get a little bit what what they call elephant's foot. It's a little bit fatter where it touched there. You need to clean that off because this little nub here is going to go down inside that there. And if you don't clean that off, it isn't going to fit. It's a tight fit. It's a tight fit on purpose. Um, let me get my weld on number 16 since that's the best glue for PLA. And this was printed in, in PLA. And if we can get some to come out, we're going to put some down inside this little notch here. I'm just going to put a couple of little dabs around in there. It actually would fit tight enough that if you didn't have glue, I don't believe it would come apart. Uh, face the detailed side towards the back and push hard. Like that. So it went down in there all the way. We're going to add some detail parts to the inside, but let's do the, uh, let's do the other leg while we're at it. We're going to need them both. I designed all these parts in Design Spark Mechanical, DS Mechanical. It's a free CAD program that I've been using for so many years that I just don't want to learn any of the new ones that are out. There we go. Now you can see there's just kind of this flat piece here and a little divot above it. Those two parts are printed separately over here. You can kind of see them sitting here. Again, they don't need any supports. They print flat. But we're going to put a little bit of glue on those and stick them to the uh, back side. All you have to do is flip it around and look at the front if you're wondering which way they go. So I'll just put a little, little dab on there. Try to center that puppy up so that we have that piece on both sides. Let's do that to this one. Like so. purely a cosmetic piece. By making it a separate piece we didn't have to do any supports which saves uh, printing time. Then these little uh, round nubbin parts go right above it. Little pivot joints or so it looks. These are all just little things that I designed based on looking at the pictures that I could find online of the prop and not knowing what's right or wrong, it was all just my best guess. You can certainly design your own legs. There's nothing uh, particularly difficult about it. 
If you don't want to learn CAD but you want to design things, there's programs like Tinkercad where you just grab shapes and stack them up and you add and subtract and make parts that way. All right, we're going to set these aside. The next main piece is this base piece and it prints flat. I print it flat on there, no supports required. First thing we need to do is install the switch. I'm using the standard slide switch I like to use which is about 19 millimeters between holes and these holes are actually threaded so if you get a, a number two screw, machine screw, it'll fit in there and the switch has only two positions, not three in my case. Uh, you will have six terminals on the back which I have folded them over to double up uh, the contacts if you will because I don't need all six but by doubling up you just allow it to pass more current you make it more reliable and we're gonna need to screw that on now and so I didn't have to get a whole bunch of different size screws I just grabbed some of the, the little bit longer uh, number twos that I had laying around you know I haven't measured that I can't tell you how long that is but we're going to uh, screw that on there the extra length won't hurt anything nice thing about when they're long is you can start them with your fingers the reason we need to put the switch on now is, is there's a piece that glues to the bottom down here which covers one of the screw holes so if you uh, don't do this first you ain't doing it at all or you'll be holding your switch in with just one screw which I suppose would work I mean it's just a switch you could always uh, tack some E6000 or hot melt glue or something on the top side okay so we snug those up got our switch on the bottom side this is what it looks like from the top side this piece here is a wedge shaped piece that's going to go on the bottom now uh, when 3D printers print something at an angle like that they do it in a stair step if you don't want that stair step because this is the side that shows to show flip the part over this way and print it this way in your printer and it'll put the stair step on the side that we're going to put the glue and you can have a nice smooth side me I didn't care it didn't bother me in the least um, before I slap the glue on there I'll kind of show you what we're going to do it's going to go she's got a slot for the switch see how this lines up with the front got the same cut out in the same piece that hangs out and lines up with the back I'm gonna put a bunch of glue on that and just hold it against a tabletop or something so it'll stay square till the glue sets up a little then we'll set that aside so let's just uh, let's put some glue around here If you really screw it up, you probably could chisel this part off with a blade, sandpaper everything clean, and try again. All right, hold it down there. The table keeps it this way, all, so all I have to side is side to side. Let's just let that sit for a moment. Okay, this particular uh, walking version is going to be using the N20 gear motor single shaft in this case the uh, paperwork that came with uh, one that I could find here says it's the N20 1298 gear ratio and what they're saying is on 12 volts that would give you 100 rpm we're going to be running on four and a half volts three uh, AAA's so I figured at uh, six volts you'd take half that and you'd have about 50 rpm at four and a half volts you're probably somewhere closer to 35 or 40 RPM, something like that. I'm going to 3D print a bunch of gears, and again, they print uh, flat, so there's no supports required. But the surface, again, that's on the bed is going to be a little bit thick, and rather than spend the time of cleaning that out, let's put the thick side toward the motor when we go to push it on clean the uh, end out here because the thick side does a build up so take your exacto knife and clean that out kind of line that up on the motor shaft this should be a real snug fit we're going to push this down against the tabletop so the motor shaft comes all the way to the end of the gear 
see if I'm strong enough to do this or if I have to get a vise or something. There we go. So I brought it to where the shaft comes all the way to the end and there's the motor. Now on this design the motor is going to go into, into this piece. Um, in order for the motor and the wires and everything to fit you got to take the little motor terminals and slightly bend them over and I'm going to pre-solder the wires on to make it easier. If I was designing this piece all over again the motor is going to fit right in here. I would just take these slots all the way up and that would build this little center piece out here so it's thicker because that butts against the end of the motor for strength. Then you could just push the motor in without screwing with the tabs. But I don't plan on redesigning this part and this is the way it is. Uh, I've already pre-glued the battery holder on the back side of this part because this is glued on with the E6000 which they used to call goop and it takes longer to dry and I didn't want to have to spend that time during this video. Now because these motors are open and the gears can get jammed make sure this area is all clean before you shove the motor in and there's going to be a cap piece that we put on there that's going to keep the motor clean. So I kind of start it like that just push that puppy down in there all the way. The uh, motor leads themselves there should be enough room that you can fish them back around through those holes if you want. I think we're going to find out. There we go. This is going to help keep everything kind of neat and clean so that nothing gets uh, caught up in any gearing or anything. There we go. Just pull that down in there. Now if you had to you could reach in here with a soldering gun and re-solder the wires on. I've done it so I know it's doable. There's that one. If you had two colors of wire then I'd say color code it because we're going to need to find uh, which wire is going to be positive and which wire is going to be negative when it's walking forward here in a moment. And both being the same color, that's not quite as easy. But that's what I had. That's what I had laying around. Okay. We got that. Now, this post here is where the flashing LED is going to go. And I'm using a uh, standard 5 millimeter size flashing red LED. And as you can see, here's this notch thing. It just sits down in there. Taking note which lead is negative and which lead is positive. Normally the shorter one or the flat side on the LED is your negative, your positive. You just want to kind of keep track of that. Then to hold that in place, there's this little ring that we print flat. No supports required. And uh, we can take that and by squishing it a little bit, we can force that down over those legs in the LED. And now we've secured that. That LED's not going anywhere. We don't have to wait for glue to dry or anything like that. Um, as I stated earlier, there is a motor cap piece. And again, it prints flat. No supports required. I haven't tested that motor. Normally I would say test the motor first just to make sure you didn't get a bad one. But we're, uh, we're going to throw caution to the wind here. We're going to live on the edge, folks. Okay, put a little bit of glue on there and take our, our cap piece. And again, this is to keep anything from getting into those, those gears. So I kind of push it forward and push it down. Just glue that cap piece on. Again, if you really had to, you could it's just PLA. You could chew it off and get the motor out if you had to start over. I mean, this isn't a very long print time. You just print the whole part all over again if you screwed up. Let's set that aside and let that uh, dry. The next parts we're going to prep are going to be the... This is a, a clawfoot walker, but it's a dual cam clawfoot walker. So we've got these gears, we've got these hex shafts. They're hexagonal. Again, they print without supports. The gears print without supports. These uh, hex shaft bushings print vertically like this without supports. If you have poor bed adhesion you may need to turn on the uh, raft or something or, or build up a layer there. In my case I just use a little glue stick so I don't have to deal with rafts and stuff like that. 
and uh, the bushing should fit through there and it should fit onto the gears. Again, the gears are going to have a, a bit of that elephant's foot. There isn't going to be any advantage to putting it one side to the other that I can think of. Smooth side out is where it's going to rub against the legs when it's running, so maybe smooth side out would be something. But again, uh, clean that out in there with your X-Acto knife so that the hex can fit. And we're going to glue, and we don't care if it hits the sliding bushing part or not, we're going to glue one half of these ends like this. I'm going to push it down into the gear and I'm just going to push the bushing down to kind of help hold everything square. We don't want the shaft sticking out further. We want the shaft flush. And we're just going to do that one more time to get those half, half ready. Like I say, it's not important that it's glued to the bushing part, but it doesn't hurt anything if it's glued to the bushing part. So, whatever is easiest. In my case, I, in my case, I threw it on the floor. In my case, it doesn't really matter. I'm just letting the glue go wherever it wants to go. Kind of helps hold everything square. If you can just push the bushing down. We're going to let those set up a little bit. So let's go back to these parts. This should be set up more than enough. As you can see, there's a space here, and this thing has got a very similar space to it, and it's going to glue down in there like that. Normally, you would glue this battery pack on afterwards so that you know height-wise where you're going to put it, and move it all the way over to the edge and all the way down to the top of that part. So let's, uh, let's glue that in. This uh, motor piece that we're working with prints flat without supports as well. The side that the battery box is glued on is the side that would be down on your build plate. Let's just uh, let's just pinch that down a little bit. So that's what we got so far. Shouldn't have to sit up very long. It sits up pretty quick, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Maybe what we'll do while we're waiting for that is we'll uh, we'll do a little bit of the soldering work. Now for that uh, LED, you need to add a current limiting resistor because we've got four and a half volts there, and most of the flashing red LEDs will start flashing at a, a little over two volts. And uh, anything you got laying around. In my case, I had this. 330 ohm resistor laying around. If I'd only had a 100 ohm resistor, I had to use that. If I had a 220, I had to use that. I'm going to add a 330, it'll be fine. We're just using it as a cosmetic light source. I'm going to take it and I'm going to trim the end of it and just solder it across. In other words, join these two end pieces together and solder it right in there to start with. And I don't know if I preheated the soldering gun enough. We'll find out here in a second. Okay. I'm putting a little bit of solder on the end of the resistor, but now let's let's tin up the switch contacts. All three of them. Let's get some solder flowing on them so they're ready for when we get to them. Like so. And like that. So you can see this is what I've have done. Joined these two together. I've got this resistor which I'm going to run up and solder to that positive leg of that LED. At least I'm hoping that's the positive leg of the LED. We'll find out together. Like so. Let's trim off the excess. There we go. Now I think I'll bring the uh, positive battery wire 
we'll loop it around and say we're going to bring it over to this last remaining side of the switch and solder it on there so we need to trim that up we don't want a bunch of excess wire floating around inside this because it could get caught up in the gears so we're trying to avoid that and let's tin that wire up There we go. I'm going to take it and I think I'll... If I can't hold it with my fingers then I'll have to get the needle nose out. We'll just see how this goes. It gets complicated only because you, you can't lay this on a table like you normally would when you're trying to keep it in camera frame. Hold the part, hold the soldering pencil. Watch the camera. I'm going to tuck that down like that. Look at that. So now we have the positive of the battery going through the switch. So if the switch is moved over like that, it should be on. If the switch is moved over like that, it should be off. We're going to take this black wire. We're going to bring it around. And we're going to solder it for now to the end of that. LED the negative side eventually one of the motor wires will also go there just like eventually one of the motor wires will go to the switch where we have the LED resistor soldered a lot of boogers building up on that soldering tip Needs a cleaning. We got a rag here. Wipe some of them off. All right. Undoubtedly, this will uh, come back to haunt me later. What I'm trying to do is get that negative wire around there. There we go. So let's test what we've got so far. Got some uh, AAA batteries here. The horrible Kirkland ones that leak. They even leak in the package. All right. All right. So we know we've wired things up right so far because we have the blinking light. Now as far as which way the motor runs, let's wait till we get some of the gearing hooked up because it can get confusing. So let's take uh, one of the gears that we've already mocked up. It's going to just slide in here. Let's try and get it kind of aiming straight up for, let's say for now, there's a little hole in the gears. We're going to be putting screws in there. And it comes around to this side so we know we have another one of these bushings that will go in from this side. And we're going to put a gear on there, but it needs to be the opposite. So if that one is aiming completely straight up and down, we need to make sure that this side that we glue on is aiming completely down. In other words, opposites. You could do it to the side. You can do it any way you want as long as you get it right. If you get it wrong, you're going to end up having to break these parts off and reprint them and do it again. Which again, they're small parts. It's not a big deal. I put glue on the end of the shaft. Put that on there. Now it can push on too far. Like I said before, we don't want the shaft sticking out past the gear. It'll hang up. So I pushed it against the tabletop to get that flush. So that's it aiming down. That one's aiming up. There should be some side play. Shouldn't be binding if we flush to those out. Now we're going to do the same thing on the bottom gear. On the same side that it's up, you want the bottom one aiming up also. Like so. And slide our bushing in. And get our gear ready. Let's put some glue on the end of that shaft.
That one fits a little looser. It means I must have uh, exactoed it out a little bit for the elephant's foot. Kind of need to let that set up just a little bit. Um, I guess we can work on the motor wiring now to try to figure out which way is the right way for these things to turn for the thing to walk. Sometimes I wait till they put the legs on because then it's real obvious. Just bearing the ends of these motor wires here so we can make some temporary connections. So if it was going to walk forward, the way we're staring at it here from this side, this is the front, it's going to need to turn counterclockwise, isn't it? So let's see, let's, let's turn it on. See, I may be getting the cart ahead of the horse here, but since we're waiting for glue to dry, why not? Put that on there. Wrong way. I was turning back. So this one up here, in this case my lower motor wire, is the one we're going to solder on to here. So let's trim. Do I want to trim it that short? See, I could wrap it around and leave some extra wire. Or I could even go around this way, I guess, and leave some extra wire. Maybe that's what I'll do, just to use up the wire. All right, let's tin that up. Some solder on the end of that wire. And we're going to solder that on where we put the resistor for the LED. And we'll push that back like that. And the negative one, we could loop around and just solder it to the LED wire. It's a little bit long for that, so we'll trim that one a little bit shorter. So let's shut it down so I don't get my fingers in the gears while we're doing this. I may need needle nose. I may not be able to hold all this. She ain't pretty. The main thing is just to make it so it's not possible for any wires to get caught up in anything. All right, how'd we do? Very good. And that should, I believe, make the thing walk forward. We're going to find out here in a second. Stop that. I don't believe there's any more soldering that needs to be done, so I'm going to move that out of the way so I don't burn myself. Okay, so I like to say I've got some more of these long screws. I mean, they're not horribly long. I don't know how long those are. I guess I could get a ruler out and tell you. It's not really that critical. They have to be able to pin the legs to the gears. Looks like it's about... Uh, eight millimeters long. I think a ten would fit too. So two by two by eight, two by ten should should fit. At any rate, the, the they should screw in to these holes here, and at the same time fit through the slots here. We're going to put one in the upper one, one through the lower one. We can tighten them down and then loosen them back up. They need to be loose, obviously, for everything to work but you want them in as far as you can put them, especially the upper one. If you happen to have a little miniature uh, number two washers, feel free to uh, put one on the upper one anyway. Not sure if I'm in camera because I 
can't look at these itty bitty screws and the camera. I'm going to hold the gear with my fingers so I'm not trying to twist and back turn the motor or anything. I'm going to put this screw right in there. Like I say, I'm going to take it down to where it's that's actually where I want it, but I want to show you that take it down to where it's too tight and then maybe back it up a whole half a turn. You don't want it super sloppy, but you do want it completely free to move. Then we've got to line up our screw for that uh, for that lower hole. Which is easier said than done. Magnetic, it's sticking to my screwdriver. Alright, let's try it again. There we go. Got to get to where I can hold that gear. So these give you your two pivot points on the cams to get the leg walking without tipping the body forward and backward. Now the body simply goes straight up and down. There's a version of this design which I could have used and thought about, which actually gets rid of the up and down part too. Well, let's test what we've got so far. Okay. So you can see what we're trying to achieve there. Now we just have to do it to this side. Take the foot. tight. Feels good. Get the lower one. This lower screw I think is a little bit shorter than the ones I had on the upper ones. I may replace that before I'm completely done but for right now for this video we'll leave it. Okay, well let's see if, if that works, if we screwed something up so far. So far, so good. So there's really nothing left to do except to put the, uh, the body on. Like I say, I, I did my bodies uh, in two different ways. This particular one I printed all in white and then masked it off and spray painted the gray and hand painted the black. This one here I tried to let the uh, the uh, Bamboo Labs multi-color printed. I found I didn't have the black at the time, so I actually only did it in gray and white, and then went back and painted the black. Uh, again, this prints flat on the bed. This is one of the only parts that needs support. You need to add supports under here and here along that strip. Your machine probably could bridge in here without any. I went ahead and put some supports in there just to keep everything really clean. I didn't want anything loose in there to fall down into the gears. Again, you're going to have elephant's foot, so come along and clean the inside of these parameters and get get all that where it's a little bit fatter, where it hits the bed, get that cleaned off. Now you can either screw it, because there are screw holes, or you can just pop it on, which is the way I would probably leave it. But if you were going to handle this as a prop and it was going to get passed around, you wouldn't want it coming apart. This piece will actually just pretty much just snap right in there. If you are going to screw it, just use some short tapping number two screws like that. They actually could be any length you want. There's nothing for them to hit. So if they were super long screws, wouldn't matter. It would still work. So if you did everything right, that's what you should get. Files for this will be up on a Thingiverse. In case you want to build one. it's uh, not that many parts it's an easy build so if you're a beginner it might be a fun one to do um, search around on the motors because sometimes on Amazon they're cheaper sometimes on Amazon they're a lot more expensive uh, I recently I found the lowest price on these uh, n20 type motors on eBay to be 
cheaper. So just kind of farm around and see who's selling them. No point paying uh, 10 to 20 bucks for one motor if you can find somebody selling them for two or three bucks. So check that out. Flashing LEDs, you can get those anywhere, Amazon, eBay, wherever you want. Battery holders, again, Amazon or eBay. The switches, it's a little bit more hit and miss. A lot of the sellers won't give you the mounting dimensions hole to hole, so you never really know for sure. And also the, uh, the little black part that you move, those come in different lengths too. These particular ones, I went with the longer piece because I knew I was going to be going through you know, not only this base plate, but this tapered piece as well. So I wanted one longer, otherwise it was recessed and I'd have to reach in there with like a screwdriver to move it. So the switches are cheap. If you're not sure, just order a small quantity of them. Order a little bag of 10 and get them in a couple of different sizes. One of them will probably be the one that works for you. If you happen to have ordered the ones that weren't just two positions but actually have three positions, then you can actually wire the switch up if you want uh, since it is a double pole double throw switch and then if it has three positions center is going to be off you can do a forward and reverse it just reverses the power to the uh, to the motor there you have it enjoy